Welcome to Inside Star Citizen. I'm Jared Huckabee. How's your week been? Here at CIG, we're taking every necessary step to be as safe as possible during the ongoing COVID-19 situation and transition our staff to a new work from home reality. But we wanted to take a few moments at the top of the show to say that our goals remain unchanged and that our team is as passionate as ever. As we always do, we'll continue to adapt to the ever-changing realities of game development as we all work through this. Now, luckily for us, many of the, the foundational elements that allow for distributed development across the world, well, they've put us in a pretty good place for this so that development will continue despite these changes. Now, with regards to our video offerings like uh, Calling All Devs, Star Citizen Live, and this show, you'll probably end up seeing a lot more home offices on camera in the future. We'll be continuously evaluating any and all impacts this has on us, and as always, we'll keep the lines of communication open. But one thing that won't change is that we'll continue doing our best work, making the best damn space game ever. And that's in office or at home. Now, about the game. The way in which players interact with the universe around them is an essential part of creating an enjoyable gameplay experience. And finding a way to manage these interactions in an efficient and easily understandable way is the challenge that the actor feature team has taken on for Alpha 3.9, working to improve both the personal inner thought and player interaction systems with some uh, long desired and heavily anticipated features. So the personal inner thought system has been quite a long time coming. Uh, we've wanted for quite some time to improve the way that the players interact with the game. There's only so many inputs available to us. So having a, a way of interacting with everything that's available to you and also knowing what's available to you is, is really important. To access the inner thought system out of the box, um, the, the input is you hold down F and you right click. And the thought behind that is that the existing personal interaction system, you hold down F, you see things around you you can interact with. This though is a hierarchical menu, so the first thing you see is a number of categories on the wheel and a number of uh, segments that you've been able to favourite. So let's say I'm in my bed, I'm just logged in, I bring up the wheel, one of the first things I'd see is actions, I click on the actions, and then, oh, player actions. I go into that category and then get out of bed is on that. In terms of what actions you can do, it's literally anything in the game that is the player action, uh, and that ranges from crouching, you know, in prone, choosing from your remotes. It feels a lot more fluid, it's a lot easier to find what you're looking for. Uh, it's contextual to where you are, so if you're looking for something, oh, how do I do this thing? Actually, I hate that, I want to change it. It's really easy to find. Um, whereas previously, you had this big screen that's full of options and you may not necessarily know where everything is or what everything does. So if you want to uh, rebind within the personal inner thought wheel, uh, you just need to navigate to the action, or if it's already on your favorites, it's there as soon as you're open. Uh, you just mouse over the segment, right click, you get the contextual menu, and within that you can either favour it or rebind. And we want to allow the player to be able to customise things uh, how they want. We want to be able to do that a lot easier, a lot faster. Uh, this new system gives them a way to navigate to what they want to change a lot more naturally, a lot easier to find. It also gives you an additional option how to play. So let's say you're not too keen on um, hotkeys. You've got this option now to navigate through the menus and trigger through that. The personal inventory system being uh, brought into the uh, personal inner thought system, it, it's more of a natural extension really. Uh, it uses the same sort of interface as a regular menu. It's also allowing you to access items in your inventory now. So whereas previously you'd mine something and it would just go in there, you can now decide to, to drop what you've mined. Obviously food is a big part of this new release um, and being able to access the food and drink within that inventory, you can now interact with it, decide to drink drop, place, etc. And rather than it being this process of you have to go through numerous steps, you just do it once within the inventory uh, interaction system. In 3.9 we're getting the personal inner thought system. Uh, as part of that, we're allowing you to interact with your weapons so you can equip and equip, etc. Uh, but it's not just that, we're also having quick select wheels, which allows you to do that much faster and much easier. So for example, you'll hold an input down, you'll get a wheel come up, you'll use your mouse or your flip stick or your uh, flight stick input and be able to quickly select from the original menu uh, the weapons that are currently on you and that dynamically updates based on what uh, items you've actually got attached to you. Uh, it's not just weapons though, we're looking at other features as well so if you're in a ship seat you'll also get access to the uh, quick select wheel for the ship systems uh, so anything from activating your quantum travel mode to mining if you're in a mining ship, scan mode, 
Moving on to the future, we're hoping to expand uh, the use of these wheels to give much faster input and access to the various features that we have throughout the game. Uh, there are a lot of systems in the game and this hopefully, I think it does, uh, simplifies your use of those systems. Up next, it's time for a sprint report. Let's do it. Starting things off with the UI team, they've recently completed a sprint on various signage that will be found throughout the upcoming new Babbage landing zone, seen here in the menu sets for four different Microtech eateries, like Garcia's Greens, Twin Sandwiches, which I hear have the best godmother in Stanton, the ever-popular Elroy's, where you can start your morning with a long shot and speculoos, and a personal favorite in Whammers. I recommend the Zesty Whirls. They're delicious. While work is also continued on developing a new type of hologram-based info panel that can display text clearly while fitting multiple form factors. From the weapons team, you can see this first pass artwork on a new SMG from Gemini, first pass on a pistol from the Lightning Bolt Company, and these VFX concepts from the upcoming ATS-CAV sniper rifle, also from Lightning Bolt Company, where they explore the different ways we might bring Lightning Bolt Company's namesake to life and the ways it might take a little of that life away from whoever is the recipient of its electron payload. Be at the right end of this thing. From characters, work's been completed on the prisoner jumpsuit that visitors to the Kleischer Rehabilitation Center will be made to wear while they work to reduce their sentences in the mineshaft below. Now, just because you're all gonna find yourself wearing the same thing, that doesn't mean you can't look good while you do it. Looking ahead to Orizon, the character team has also been building the security outfits for NPCs known as Batista and Gibbs, seen here first in concept, and then the current progress modeling in 3D. Additionally, there's been some work done concepting potential looks for a space whale, with these three colorful looking options currently up for review. Moving to environments, tests are being done exploring the possibilities of bringing touch blending to assets like flora found throughout Star Citizen and Squadron 42. After setting up a specific bone structure for the plant, the idea here is that when a player, vehicle, or ship gets close, the engine automatically spawns bones for each leaf, allowing the leaves to bend when a player or object collides with them. And while it's still early R&D, it's yet one more way we're exploring how to make the universe of Star Citizen and Squadron 42 as dynamic and immersive as can be. In the continuing efforts to always improve where possible on what's come before, Artists on the environment team have worked out how to get a much greater detail read from terrain maps within the existing system, as seen here in these before and after shots. By adjusting the height maps, they'll be able to layer in many more second, third, and fourth read details than ever before. Now, if you're a subscriber, you may have seen in the vault over the last two weeks images of work being done on new cargo and refinery expansions to the modular space station system. Seen here, currently in white box phase, the modules are more than just exterior variations, but will also provide new opportunities for exploration and gameplay within. Now, while this isn't scheduled to come online in Alpha 3.9, it's a fine example of staggered development in action, with developers and teams working on tasks scheduled across multiple releases. Finishing touches are also being put on the Kleischer Rehabilitation Facility, first seen at CitizenCon and then here on ISC earlier this quarter. Going to prison has never looked so good, and when Alpha 3.9 goes live, you'll be able to explore all the intricate details within for yourself. So I'm just gonna sit back and let you take a look for a bit. I said I was gonna sit back, but look at those soft body tarps. Just look at these. Best soft body tarps ever? Yeah, I'm gonna say so. Finally, before we let you go, last week on our return edition of Calling All Devs, we saw some of our first glimpses inside the Asiedo Com Array from Squadron 42. If you haven't checked that out, do so. But we have another update from another area of the station to share. 
Now this station is being built in much the same way our ships are, with all the components and subcomponents functional and linked together. So if you do something like drop down into the maintenance or ventilation systems, it's never a dead end, and a showcase of not only the incredible level of detail the squadron team is going for, but the ability for players to choose how they tackle their objectives either head on, from the side, or in this case, from overhead. So what did we learn about this week? Well, we learned that with updates to both the personal inner thought and player interaction systems coming in Alpha 3.9, the player experience in Star Citizen is about to get a major upgrade. That there will be plenty of places to eat in New Babbage. That environments continue to improve on everything that's come before. And I just gotta mention those soft body tarps again. I know what I like. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you next week.